It's 6 a.m. And we're with Border Patrol agent Herman Rivera to see firsthand, beyond the headlines and politics, what's really happening on the busiest sector of the U.S.-Mexico border. Right away, we heard that a group of 100 people were apprehended crossing nearby. I believe this is the second group. We're averaging about 1,000. A thousand a day. A thousand a day for this uh, sector. We found a long line of men, women, and a lot of children, all looking exhausted. Some people crossing to the U.S. avoid apprehension, hiding, and running from border patrol. That's not the case with asylum seekers, mostly families and children traveling alone from El Salvador, Honduras, Guatemala, and Nicaragua. Once they touch U.S. soil, asylum seekers want immigration authorities to find them. And this is where one of the gallery spots, if you will, it makes it easier for a bus to come down here and pick these people up. Standing first in line is a little girl. The agents tell us she suffers from asthma, and she's all alone. She told Agent Rivera she's been traveling for 28 days from Honduras. Atlanta. Okay, give me a mama. A lot of times, the, you know, the smugglers say, "Here, take the kid," you know, to some complete stranger. They started traveling about 40 days ago from Honduras, and she says that there is the reason why she decided to come with her then three month old baby is uh, there's no medication, there's no way to find work. Patty says that during the past month, she's had to sleep out in the open and on the floor with her small baby. Nelson and his son, who's 14, are also from Honduras. We're here. Because the situation in the country is, is impossible for me. Yeah. yeah, I don't have a, a work. My family uh, needed for much, much security for, for my family. That's why Agent Rivera says that after the long journey, so many of them fleeing gang threats and extreme poverty in their countries, and then more insecurity in Mexico, they seem relieved to surrender to the agents in green. So what happens is that uh, either law enforcement over there on the south side, you know, it's been known that they exploit some of these people. They know we're not going to do anything to harm them first. We're not going to take advantage of them. It's the end of one journey for them, but only a small percentage of people get asylum, and the process can take years. Many others will be deported right back to where they fled from.